Tyson Fury says to Francis Ngannou, come see me if you want to make some real money. Oh, I got a lot to say about this. Let's talk. Push the weight in no fix. Let's the live is one in the six. Hey, fit the runner boy, you make no question. You would run a motherfucker high stepping. Hey, you never had a big enough weapon. Hey, motherfucker never learned your lesson. Hey, I'm an 88 pack nigga. Boo. I'm an 88 pack nigga. Boo. I mean, they walk and drink blood, things out for more. Motherfucker change like a whole brother. I'm just a nigga from the hood trying to stack a little cheddar for the money. Drew Titan, Bronx on deck. Shout out to the mighty LDBC. Let, let, let's get to it. I'm not going to waste no time here. Boxing scene. Just saw this article uh, a couple of hours ago. Tyson Fury says to Francis Ngannou, see me if you want to make some real money. Link will be in the description as usual. Um, so uh, let's talk about it. <clears throat> Francis Ngannou scored a unanimous decision win against Cyril Gannon. Saturday night, defending his heavyweight title for the first time in a while, headlining UFC 270. All right. Now, I want you to understand something before I go any further. I'm reading this off of a boxing website, and I'm talking about a UFC fighter. Okay. I'm on a boxing website talking about a UFC fighter. All right. A champion, by the way. A champion. Boxing scene first revealed Saturday night that Ngannou made a minimum purse of $600,000 to fight fellow Frenchman Gannon, who made $500,000. The reported purse do not include any bonuses or pay-per-view points. Hours after the fight, WBC champion Tyson Fury took to Twitter to salute Ngannou while also taking a jab at him. Congratulations to Francis Ngannou, but if you want to make some real money, Come see the Gypsy King. Money bag emoji, said Fury. Earlier this month, Fury tweeted, I mean, Fury tweeted, who would like to see me fight this beast under boxing rules and tagged in Ghana and UFC president Dana White. <laughs> this is where we're going with this. The 35-year-old in Ghana has been strongly pursuing a crossover career in boxing. Especially as his contractual situation with the MMA company remains murky. And his purse is nowhere near the stratosphere of Fury, who made close to 30 million in his trilogy fight against Deontay Wilder in October. Angano's fight against Gani, I'm sorry if I'm saying his name wrong. I don't watch the UFC like that anymore. And I'm sure Ganny is a, is a great fighter. Um, I'm just apologizing for butchering his name. Um, his fight against Ganny was uh, the last fight on his UFC deal. If Ngannou does not fight until January, he'll be a free agent. After the fight, White did not present the uh, UFC belt to Ngannou in customary fashion. I didn't know that. Wow. And the executive did not conduct a traditional post-fight press conference. Wow. Ngannou was surprised with, uh, with both developments. You have to ask White why that happened. Ngannou said with a laugh, I didn't have anything to do with that. It's been a long time. I've been wondering about my future in, in the company. Nothing has changed. I'm still in the same position. Ngannou immediately expanded on his uh, contractual situation. He said it's simply not it's not simply money, obviously. Money is, is a part of it. It's also the type of contract that I don't agree with. I don't feel like it's fair, said Ngannou. I don't feel like I'm a free man. Wow. I don't feel like uh, that I've been treated well. It's unfortunate that I have to be in this position to be able to say that. But I think that but I think it's at least something that everyone should have the right to claim for what's best for them. An interview with, uh, in an interview with ESPN earlier this month when Ngannou was asked if he would keep fighting under the frameworks of his current deal, the heavyweight shot down a notion. No, said Ngannou. I will not fight for 500000 or 600000 anymore. It's over. I took this fight with Ganny for personal reasons because I want to make sure that regardless of 
whether it's fair, I can make my case that I have completed the fights. Gano told UFC commentator Joe Rogan during a post-fight interview in the cage that a career crossover, uh, I'm sorry, that a crossover career into boxing is imminent. <clears throat> so this is why Tyson is throwing his name in the hat. That option, boxing is always in the back of my pocket. It's something I must do before the end of my career, he said. Right now, I'm really looking toward it. any opportunity to get that because it's not like I have a lifetime here. So yeah, I, I, I better start thinking about it. And Ghana improved to 17 and three with his win against Ghana, showing off impressive wrestling skills at length. The victory was the first via decision in a hard hitting for the hard uh, hitting in Ghana. That's the article. Link will be in the description. Here's my opinion. Um, okay, so the man said that he, it's imminent that he's going to cross over the box. My question is, why the hell is Tyson Fury throwing his name in the hat? Tyson Fury and guys like Usyk and AJ and Deontay, they're on a pedestal right now. And to be very honest, I don't care how good of a UFC fighter you are. It's apples and oranges. You might be able to survive coming over into boxing, but he's looking to take his name and make a million dollar payday. I hear that. But why is the WBC champion of the world throwing his name in the hat? You see, remember when we said that Tyson Fury can't sell anything without the proper dance partner? Don't, don't get mad. We've seen it. Deontay Wilder threw him a bone. They fought to a draw. And instead of the immediate rematch, you remember the rematch that everyone said, oh, Deontay didn't want that rematch. This fool signs with Bob Arum, has two fights in between. Both of them did horrible. He was giving away, what, 4,000 seats, 6,000 seats or something like that? The man can't sell. The man's not a draw. No one's checking for him. But you rooted for him when? When you put him in a ring against Deontay Wilder. So you idiots cared about. This man can't sell. Period. He needs a dance partner. And guess what? Usyk and AJ apparently is happening because AJ said, I never said I was going to take any step aside money. You know, whatever. Things could change between now and tomorrow. Whatever. But if AJ loses to Usyk, and Usyk goes on for undisputed against uh, uh, Fury. They're already talking about having that fight in Dubai. Who in America? All you American Fury fans? Y'all going to Dubai to see this fight? Y'all don't even know who Alexander Usyk is. Stop playing with me. You didn't buy this guy's two fights in between the first and second Wilder fight. You didn't buy those fights in between. You know what this guy is? <clears throat> you know what Tyson Fury is? A white Bud Crawford. Because as many fans you swear this guy has... You sure don't translate that into dollars, into views. But it's great in that ring. I've seen it. But I'm trying to figure out why the views don't match. You know when Bud is going to break the bank? When he fights several. Bud needs a dance partner. Why is it that Deontay Wilder his views do just fine on his own. The best views Fury ever did, the most money he ever made was with who? Deontay Wilder. So if he was sitting on a bank of money, you think he'd be worried about Francis Ngannou? Why is he calling out a UFC fighter, the WBC champion, right? The Gypsy King. Why is he calling out a UFC champion? Why? Yo, man, I don't like talking about money and stuff like that, but you, you can't avoid it. This is what he said. And, and watch this, y'all. Whoever in Ghana decides to fight on a professional level, he'll make more money than Fury that night. Fury versus the winner of Usyk and AJ is not going to do as much money as in Ghana versus anybody else. They're not going to do as much views as what I'm saying. Views one night, 
Now, if he fights Ngannou, they're going to make some money. You know what Ngannou should do? <laughs> Hit up Jake Paul. Hit him up. He likes fighting MMA guys. Hit him up. That's the fight against an MMA fighter that he will not take. I think, first of all, I think Ngannou's too big for him. But Ngannou can make some bread with him. Let's say Ngannou says, all right, I'm going to have a warm-up fight in boxing. And then, uh, you know, or, you know, F a warm-up. I'm already warmed up. I'm going to go into the heavyweight division and uh, I want to fight, uh, I don't know, pick anybody. Pick anybody. I'm going to fight Michael Hunter. Showtime, pick it up. Somebody pick it up. Hey, I'm going to fight F.A. Jogba. I'm going to fight King Kong Ortiz. I'm going to fight Frank Sanchez. There's a reason why Fury's calling this guy out. Even the undisputed matchup, no one cares. I'm telling you right now, nobody in America is talking about undisputed at the heavyweight division anymore. Have you heard anything? Have you seen any articles? I'll say it again. Nobody's talking about Undisputed in America anymore. Why? Where the Fury fans? How about this? Dillian White. How about this? And Donald can say, yeah, I'm going to go up and fight Dillian White. I don't think he'll win. Like I said, this is boxing. Apples and oranges. I don't think he could beat Dillian White in a boxing match. I don't think so. But him and Dillian White could do a quick payday. Why do you think Fury's calling this guy? What happened to Undisputed? What happened to, at, at heavyweight? What happened to it? AJ fumbled the ball. So now the UK ain't talking about it. Usyk has a majority of the belts. And Fury's just sitting there on his fat ass. And nobody's talking about Undisputed. And I'm putting emphasis on America. What happened to it? We were talking about it. Y'all allowed this dude to come in and snake Deontay Wilder out of his belt. You justified it, and now no one cares about Undisputed? What happened to all the boxing fans in America? You don't care about Undisputed now? One face, one name, what happened to it? What happened? No one cares? Bye-bye, Miss American Pie. Yeah, now he's calling out an MMA fighter. Y'all did this. Y'all did this. But you know what? You don't care. Ain't no real boxing fans in, uh, 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 in America. There was a bunch of wilder haters. And by default, you rooted for this guy. Whom, I might add, if he fights for Undisputed, they're not even going to have it on the soil. And it didn't matter if it was, it wouldn't matter if it was in America. You know why? Don't act like you would go to the fight anyway. Tyson Fury versus Alexander Usyk. Or Tyson Fury versus Anthony Joshua. MGM Grand. Please. Please. They'll be giving away tickets. Because I'm not going. I'm not stoked for it. Put it in Madison Square Garden. I'm not going. I don't care. AJ came to New York to fight Andy Ruiz. I did not care. And he got stopped. Didn't care. I can understand the top 15 guy saying, oh, this guy in Ghana who wants to come to uh, boxing, I'll welcome him. Don't get this confused because I, I see the haters. They're going to come in here, oh, yeah, you know, he's giving him an opportunity. No, he's not. He's trying to lace his pockets. And don't be surprised if Bob Arum supports this crap. You know why? He's still owe Bob Arum some bread. Especially if he F around and loses his lawsuit against Bud. Mm-mm. But do you see Bob Arum talking about the amount of money he lost on Tyson Fury? Don't think he didn't. He did. Two failed events. Tried to get him uh, out of this arbitration. That failed. That cost money. Had to pay Deontay Wilder for all the trouble. So you won, but you lost. So no one's talking about Undisputed in America. I don't see it on ESPN. I don't see Skip Brainless talking about it. 
Skip, skip, skip. What about undisputed skip? Tyson Fury should be undisputed. They have not said anything about this guy. But he's bringing up Ngannou, right? You know what, Ngannou? Don't even bless this guy. Get on the phone to F.A. Jogba and fight him. I don't know. I'm sorry. Bob Arum owns the rights to him. He might tell him, hey, you know, don't fight him. You can fight Tyson Fury for more money. Ngannou, trust me, you might be on the outside looking in. But this guy right here, not only will he cheat you, but this is fool's gold. You'll just get cheated in the process. Call up King Kong Ortiz. Fight him. There's a lot of heavyweights. Forget the top-ranked banner altogether. Do your homework on this guy. And I know they'll be dangling, uh, I don't know, a $10 million paycheck in front of you. Don't do it. This guy needs you. He's suffering. He owes people money. Don't let him drag you to Vegas. So don't let him try and drag you to, to Dubai. He needs you. Ignore him. This is a WBC champion of the world. Calling out an MMA guy. Think about that, Francis. Think about that. He needs you. Bullshit him. Say, hey, man, I'm the A-side in this. I know what's going on with you. Give me $20 million up front and back in money. You need me. You said my name. Crossover and boxing is imminent? Yeah, good. You got options. Stay away from top rank. And stay away from him. Fool ass cheater. Yeah, we're going to see. I see the games. No one looking for undisputed anymore. Funny, right? Very funny. Bronx on deck. Move!